super radiogram. Did you get it out here? It was ordered from Cal. Most of this stuff is PWD, of course. Except the pictures. Oh, I haven't noticed. Henry Moores. What a surprising man you are. You mustn't think a policeman has no imagination. Oh, I didn't. I meant how clever of you to find them, that's all. People sometimes do dismiss policemen as insensitive. It's not surprising, I suppose. So far as I'm concerned, I felt the Indian police service was the best job I could do. Of course, um, there wasn't a war then. If I'd known what was going to happen, it would have made things different. But then, uh, anybody can say that. If we knew what was going to happen, uh, our choices wouldn't be the same. No. No, they wouldn't. I like this kind of thing, too. It's Claire de Lune. Yes. What made you think of that? Do you like it, too? It was one of David's favourites. My brother. Almost the last time I was with him, we went to the old Queen's Hall. Before it was bombed. Walter Geese King, isn't it? <laughs> That's who we had. Does it upset you? I can take it off. No, it's all right. I want to hear it. Go on with what you were saying about not being a policeman. If you'd known about the war. But when it started, I applied for a transfer. Nothing doing. They told me I was more valuable where I was, which was good in a way. And the work is important. I care a lot about it. For someone with my background, it seemed to open up a way. What is your background, Ronald? I don't know at all. It's very ordinary. My father did quite well, but I'm only a grammar school boy. And my grandparents were pretty humble sort of people, you might say. I worked very hard, passed all the right exams. I've only one regret about my misspent youth, if that's what it was. And that is I never really had it to spend or misspend. I suppose that's why I find it hard now to do the things that other people do so easily. Enjoy myself. Feel free with people. I tend to concentrate on the job. And life goes by. So that's what I was doing while all the other chaps were simply having fun. That's why I never found what you might call the right sort of girl. It's meant I've often been pretty lonely, keeping to myself. I know I haven't got much to offer. That's why our friendship means a lot to me. Yours and mine. If you understand. Understand? What? I'm only asking whether after you've had time to think about it, you'd consider the possibility of becoming engaged to me. Oh. Well, thank you, Ronald. I thought I'd ask. Yes, it was very kind. I'm awfully sorry. I hadn't really thought much about getting engaged to anyone. Well, there you are. 
Do you like the music? Yes, yes, I did. I'm sorry. It was a marvelous dinner, too. You went to heaps of trouble. And I am sorry. Are you coming in for a nightcap? Thanks. Not tonight. All right. And thank you for a lovely evening. By the way... Yes? I hope you don't mind the suggestion, but I'd like you to have the use of this car when you come home at night. I can very easily send round my driver to the hospital when you finish late. Uh, the McGregor house is rather isolated, on the edge of the contunement, and there may be trouble brewing up, as I expect you know. What sort of trouble? Anti-British feeling. Mr Gandhi's quit India campaign. If the Indian National Congress Party votes in support of that, it'll amount to a call to every Indian to go on strike and refuse to help us keep out the Japanese. I don't believe Gandhi has the least idea what effect all this has on the sort of hotheads I have to deal with. Young Indians with a bit of education and no sense at all. That crazy old man sets them on fire with dreams and illusions and I have to cool them off. That's why I'd like you to have the use of the car. Whenever you want. It's very kind of you, Ronald. Although I'm sure it won't be necessary. Forgive me if I say it is. As a policeman. If you insist. I don't intend to put you under any obligation. You do understand. Yes, of course. I'll see you to the house then. Good night, Ronald, and thanks again for everything. Think about what I said. At the bungalow, I mean. Some ideas take some getting used to. And I'm a patient man. Yes, of course. Good night. Good evening, Raju. Unless you hold him still, please. Let me do it. Thank you. Sure. Mr. Kumar, I have been to the bank. One day, I am sure Mr. Govindas, the manager, will say to me, Sister Old Miller, this week there is no money but not today. I have the money, and we have the rain. So many patients, too. Sister Ludmilla, this is Miss Manners. I brought her to the sanctuary because she wants to meet you. To meet me? How do you do? Miss Manners works at the Mayapur General Hospital. But if she comes to help us here, we won't tell. Shall we, sister? You wish to help? <laughs> if you'd let me. God tells us what we should do. How can I quarrel with him? What 
are you telling me? You are telling me you have no time to learn? I honestly believe it's wasting your time as well as mine. To learn to speak to your own people? And you are calling this a waste of time? I say it is your life until now you have been wasting. Let us begin again. Hello. Oh, hello. I am willing, Kumar. When you want. You should be feeling shame to be speaking always in the language of a foreign power. Who is that? A chap called Pandit Baba. He tried to teach me Hindi once, but I gave it up. Because his breath smelt of garlic. Yes, I told you. Quite honestly, because I was pretty awful, too. Are you going back to work? No, just leaving. Would you come with me to Subhas Chan's? I've got to look at some photographs he's taken of me uh, for Lady Mamas, my aunt in Royal Pindi. It's her idea of a birthday present for me, so she told Lily. I said how ghastly and that they'd be terrible, but it's what she wants, so come and help me choose. Chuck out the worst, I mean. <laughs> you want? And after, you can come and have tea at the McGregor house. Have you got your bike? Is that the office? We can cycle back together, then. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, eh? There now. Did you see that? Honey, I think it's going to rain again. Really? Good. Did you know? You've never been inside the Bibiga. Oh, I suppose that's like living in London and they're going to see the tower. Oh, oh. oh mind if I smoke? So, when did you come here then? Lily brought me. I don't know. Soon after I came to Mayapur. Because of all the stories of the ghosts and the building that used to be here. And the McGregor house and... Don't you honestly know? No. Honestly. Bibigar means the house of the women. You must know that at least. It was built about 200 years ago by the Prince of Mayapur. Somewhere nearby to enjoy himself and keep his courtesans. Well, then, a Scotsman called McGregor appeared on the scene, an ex-East India merchant, and he built another house, the McGregor house. Well, by now, the old prince was dead, and his sons didn't have so many called sons, I suppose. Anyway, the Bibigar was empty. So that when McGregor fell in love with a beautiful young Indian girl, he installed her here, uh, just around the corner from his home, and that was fine, till one day, he called unexpectedly, and he found her in the arms of her young lover, a boy of her own race. And uh, he killed them both and burned down the Bibigar. And it's the ghosts of those young lovers that people think they see. And McGregor, too, I shouldn't wonder if he feels at all sorry by now. How typically Indian. That's just what I thought. And I don't believe a word. Neither did I. I do now, though. What? Even the ghosts? If you think of the history of us in India, uh, the British, I mean, there must be ghosts. Hundreds of thousands, probably. And I hate it. What? 
India. I hate all the beggars and the crowds and the heat and the bugs and most of all myself for being black and English. Sorry, I don't know what to say. I hated India at first, too. Doesn't it get better? I didn't mean to talk about it. I knew, really. Yes, of course. You're not going to chuck them away, as you said. The photographs you didn't want from Subhash Chand. Why? I just thought one was rather good. I'd like to have it. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. They're all pretty ghastly, actually. Do you know which one it was? Yes. This one. Sure you don't mind? They need proofs. They'll all get thrown away, except the one we chose for Auntie Ethel. And now it's stopped. So we can go. Actually, I don't think I'd better come to the Lagoga house with you. Why not? Lily isn't there. Not that it would matter. No, I know it wouldn't matter. I should get home. Thanks all the same. I'll be at the sanctuary again on Tuesday, as usual. If you come round. Otherwise, I don't know when I'll see you or how. Oh, I'll see you. Bound to see you. Somewhere around. Goodbye, ghosts! Aunt Lily, how are your eyes? Better without the specs now? Oh. Yes, I think they are. If you do the exercises every day, what were you saying? Do English people ever go inside the temple? I mean, can you? The local temple, I wanted to see inside. I've never heard of anyone. It's not an interesting temple, so tourists never come. I'm not sure an English girl would be allowed. But I can ask. One of the teachers at the tech would know. Oh, don't bother. I can ask Harry. He should know. Yes, well, you could do that, I suppose. I thought I I'd wondered... try. Sorry. I rather wondered if you were getting bored. You never go out now except for bashing off to that sanctuary place. Or do you go there only to meet? I'm not bored at all. Just tired after my heavy duties at the hospital, watching the Indian orderlies emptying the bedpans. And I'm meeting Ronald Merritt for dinner at the club tomorrow. Honestly, Auntie.
Thanks for bringing me home, Ronald. I was going to ask if you'd care to come round to my place again. On Saturday, if you're free. Oh, no, I can't. Not Saturday. I've got something organised, more or less. A visit to the local temple. Oh. Who's taking you? Mr Kumar? Yes, he is. Why, had you heard? Well, not exactly. People have started talking. Oh, have they? You shouldn't be surprised. It's always tricky going out and about with Indians, especially at times like these. Because there's a war, but I thought we were fighting the Japanese. Then you'd better watch Congress and how it votes on Mr Gandhi's Quit India resolution. It could be a nasty shock. I tried to warn you about this before. Yes, I know. What I don't see is what it has to do with Mr Kumar. It might have quite a lot. He hasn't a very good reputation. He tries to make capital out of the fact that he lived in England for a while, which he seems to think makes him English for some reason. You know what I feel for you. It's because of that I haven't said anything about this before. But I feel it's my duty to warn you against this association with Mr Kumar. Oh, stop acting like a policeman. Well, it's partly a police matter. Kumar was under suspicion at one time, and still is. But you must know about all that. I know nothing at all. And I'm not interested. I met Harry here as Aunt Lily's guest, and that's good enough for me. And I'd be grateful if people would stop telling me who I can have as my friends and who I can't, especially if the only trouble with them is the colour of their skins. <laughs> That's the oldest trick in the game. Pretending colour doesn't matter. It does matter. It's basic. It matters like hell. I'm sorry. I put it very badly. But I can't help it. The idea revolts me. It's all right. It's all right, Ronald, I understand. Thanks for the meal. And for bringing me home. Lady Chatterjee's. Yes. Now she's here, please, hold on. Madam. Me, I've got to dash. Mr. Kumar, madam. Oh. Oh, thank you, Ramaswamy. Hurry. Yes, I had your note. About the temple. Well, I had to speak to my uncle. Ramesh Chan, yes. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you. That's if you really want to go. Well, of course I want to go. That's why I asked. Why don't you come here to dinner at the McGregor and then we'll go on? I don't think I can. Then come in for a drink after? I'll try. Yes. All right. I'll expect you in a tonga about six o'clock. Okay. Hurry. Yes. Sure you don't mind? No. Just surprised. Surprised for what? At you, wanting to visit a temple. But I'd love to. Yes. Tomorrow then. Come to the coffee shop. You are going to the temple to make puja. Someone wants to see it. Someone. Uh, come on, Vidya. What's this idea you have going with English mem sahibs? I can show you some real girls. How shall we make you a good Indian if you carry on like this? Now, what is a good Indian? Oh, really? I want to know. fighting manpower and their armoured fighting vehicles for the defence of India and, when the time comes, to take part in the Allied counter-offensive against Japan. Japan's first rush carried right through to the threshold of India and Australia while Hitler hacked his way through from the west. That was the moment Congress chose to call upon Britain to quit. To agree would indeed have been quitting. Quitting China, quitting Russia, quitting our empire and all our allies really quitting India.
Thank you. What for? For taking me to do puja. Can I have one? If you want. They're Indian. You're smoking again. Yes, like a good Indian. I smoke beedies. I do puja. And I know what else you've been trying to do ever since you came. You've been trying to put me off, haven't you? Put off? What do you mean, put off? Put off, put off, put me off you. Like everybody else has tried. Oh, yes, who's that? Everybody. People like Ronald Merrick. He thinks you're a bad bet, by the way. Well, he should know, I suppose. A good bet, bad bet? What am I supposed to be, a racehorse? I don't care a damn what Merrick thinks of me. No, well, I don't see why you should. After all, you've never even met him. I should say I've met him. Have you? If that's what you call it. How? When I was drunk and he picked me up at the sanctuary. Picked you up? That was Ronald. Ronald himself, when you were arrested. Of course it was him. Why not? I thought you knew. No. You better tell me. Tell you what? What happened? They found me on the wasteland by the river, Sister Ludmilla and her friends, drunk as a coot. And in the morning, Merrick showed up while I was washing at the pump. He shouted at me in Hindustani, so I answered back, which gave his henchmen a chance to beat me up. Then they took me into questioning. I can't believe. What did you think when Lily asked you here to her party? I was amused. Were you? must have known. That day in war week when you came up, when you were with your friends and came up and did your Lady Bountiful bit. He was watching. You knew that, didn't you? Did that amuse you, Harry? And did it just amuse you every time we've been together? Yes, you could put it that way if you want. You've been very kind, and I'm grateful. I didn't mean anything as kindness. I didn't want. Good night, Harry. Good night.
Hello. Long time no see. Not been around much. Can I get you the other half? I'll buy you one. Oh, I'm still on duty, as it happens. I spent most of the day with the Deputy Commissioner and Brigadier Reed. We heard this afternoon the Congress Committee voted in favour of Gandhi's resolution. The little man in the dhoti has called on his followers to do or die. So, we'll see. And is it going to be exciting? That depends. The government has its own plans, of course. It could mean strikes, arson, civil disturbance. That's why I'm here. We're making arrangements to bring women and children together at the club if things get rough. So, um, you'll know where to come. And Lily? There'll be similar arrangements at the other club for them. How did you enjoy your visit to the temple? Oh, all right. Bit of a racket, though. Well, you know. You can't go anywhere without digging out the back sheesh, can you? Yes, that's true. Good night, Mr. D'Souza. Good night, sister. <laughs> Mr. Kumar? Good evening, sister. Clinic is over. No one is here but myself and Mr. D'Souza. Will you come in? Thanks. As I tell you, no one is here tonight. Miss Manners did not come. No. She comes on Tuesdays, as a rule. So it is I you have called to see. Perhaps to talk? Yes. I've been drinking. <laughs> no, not like the night you picked me up. On the wasteland by the river. Such anger in your face. Such passion of rejection. Was it hate or love? So I prayed for you. And after, when I saw you here together, I thought that it was love and that she loved you too. You thought it was for Miss Manners that I was drunk that night? It was not? No. And tonight again? No. It was the day I saw a chap called Colin Lindsay, my closest friend. We were at school together. After I came out to India, we swapped letters, rather a lot at first, and then we lost touch. Not many letters after the war began. He became a captain. Said if his regiment ever came to India, he'd come to Mayapur and see me. Just like the old days, you see. <laughs> he hadn't the least idea how I was living. I'd never told him. He thought of me as a Raja. Hunting tigers, sticking pigs. Well, I never heard from him again. Except his regiment did come to India, even to Mayapur. And I did see him. One afternoon on the Maidan. I'd gone there to report a cricket match for the Gazette. Someone hit a four and they ran. And then I saw him. Colin. In his uniform, but just the same. Colin! And then he saw me. And didn't see me. In my Bapu clothes, under my topi, he didn't realize there was one black face he should remember. Well, didn't you know? We all look alike. I'd become invisible. Even to him. 
invisible. Come on, I say, come on. Look here, you fellows. This is Mr. Kumar, Harry Kumar, very pucker, very public school. I say, I say. Congress wala. They all laughed at me, and in truth, I was ridiculous. An Indian, incapable of being anything except an Indian. Something totally alien to me. <laughs> so I went. And we drank a lot of homemade hooch in a hut near the road by the Bibigar Bridge, where I began to learn to be an Indian. And they burnt the symbol of my English shame. And then they carried me home. Well, that's what Vidyar told me later. I didn't know. They carried me almost to my door, because they were too ashamed and didn't want to see my aunt. Mrs. Sen Gupta. And I must have wandered after them, onto the waste ground, where you found me. There it is. But you were foolish. When Mr. Mary came here looking for a wanted man, and you answered him so English, so superior. Is your name Kuma or Kumar? Actually, it doesn't matter. Either will do. Do you know anyone that's been convicted of political offences? No. Do you know anything of Pandit Baba? Oh, yes, Superintendent Saib. I certainly do. Who is this, Pandit Baba? A guru who smells of garlic and obviously to merit of something worse. Where did you get drunk? Shan't tell you. Why did you get drunk? Ah, that I will. Because I hate this whole damn stinking country. The people who live in it and the people who run it too. And that goes for you too, Merrick. You told him that? Just so. That he will not forget. Or forgive? He wants to be so British. Just doing his job. When we parted, he shook hands. Goodbye, Kumar. Keep out of trouble. And I have. Honestly, sister. Only a little drunk. Was that the telephone? Is it for me? Lady Chatterjee, madam. No, I'm all right. It was really to be expected, after all. Yes, I shall be here. Namaskar. That was Judge Menon. They arrested the Mahatma this morning at four o'clock. And a few of the chums around here. You remember Vasim, a lawyer? He's one. One knows about these things, of course. All the same when it happens. A bit of a shock. You're going to work today? Sorry, yes. It's my Sunday on. A big question mark has been written across the face of India. With Japan knocking at India's gates, the Congress party, led by the now-interned Gandhi and President Azad, made use of hooligans and agitators to press for a mass civil disobedience campaign. Disturbances broke out in many cities, but a strong government and the fine work of the Indian police greatly helped to curb the outbreaks. Demonstrators flooded the public parks for mass meetings, presided over by orators who by no means represent the vast majority of India's millions. Every effort was made to prevent bloodshed, but the lawless element found it a grand opportunity to run loose and stir up trouble. Hello, Babs. Last job of the day. May not be, actually. Where do they keep wound dressings? Um, bottom left. There's a bit of a flap on. Matron's looking for you. They brought in a missionary lady who was attacked on the road. Who by? What do you mean? They found her on the roadside between here and Tanpur. Sitting in the rain, nursing an Indian schoolmaster who'd been with her in the car, apparently. They'd been attacked by a gang of rioters and the man was dead. I know what I'd do if I got my hands on them. Anyone who trusts an Indian is a bloody fool, if you ask me. Anyway, Matron wants you to sit with her till a relief comes on. They've cleaned her up a bit. She's in the side ward of number three. Miss Crane.
there was nothing I could do. Oh, okay. There's a friend for the culture above the bright blue sky. A friend who never changes, whose love will never die. I me friends may fail us and change each Oh, there you are. I'm most grateful for all this. Is my luggage there, do you know? Yes, it is. I've been wondering if I brought the sweets to give the children. Would you mind? Of course. It isn't locked. Treasures on earth. You'll find them in a tin. Yes. Here they are. Boiled sweets. For the school children. They're here all right. Is this your picture? Let me see. Oh yes, that's mine. You know what it is? The jewel in the crown. I use it to teach the children English. The Queen is Victoria on her throne. The sky is blue. This is the Queen. That is her crown. They usually think the jewel is the one the Prince is offering. But I tell them, no. The jewel is India, you see. It's an allegory. A jewel is in here. Oh, you mustn't talk too much. You'll get tired. Disraeli is there. 1877. The year he persuaded her to call herself Empress of India. It was a sort of promise. A promise not fulfilled. There's nothing I can do, you see. Please, Miss Crane. Please rest. <laughs> it was too late. I stayed with her about an hour after that. She was quieter then. I meant to get here in time for clinic. That's why I'm late. There were rumours in the black town today. No one has come. No one. I must get home then, before it's dark. It would be wise, I think, though good to talk. Do you know this image? The image of the dancing Shiva, dancing in a circle of cosmic fire. The circle of creation and destruction, of dark and light, and wholeness. He's got wings. Gives you a sort of flying feeling. As if you could leap into the dark with him and not come to any harm. What was she trying to tell me? What did she say about a promise that was not fulfilled between us and India? Miss Crane spoke of this. There's nothing I can do. Perhaps she didn't mean that. It's something I've been thinking. About a leap in the dark? About us in India. <laughs> I'm really dreaming. 
I must be half asleep, I think. It stopped raining anyway. And the sun is out. You must be careful. It will be dark soon. There are rumors of trouble. One hears of things in Tampur and Dibrapur. Oh, I shall be all right, even if it rains. <laughs> Goodbye, sister. Goodbye. And God go with you. I'm sorry to disturb you. Are you all right? Why, yes. It's good of you to be concerned, though, Mr. Merrick. Will you come in? Uh, no, thank you. <laughs> I expect you've come to see Daphne, but she's at the club. Yes, that's what they said at the hospital. But she isn't there. Oh, isn't she? Well, then I won't... I'm sure she's all right. Is she with Harry Kumar? No, I don't think so. I'm sure she isn't. At this time of night, where can she be? She'll be in soon. Come in and have a drink. Uh, no, I don't think I should, thanks. There's rather a lot going on. Oh. Is it serious? It seems to be. What a damn mess. Some of the people you know are locked up. Mr. Desai and Srinivasan. Yes, I know. But here I am. You know, I asked her to marry me. Didn't she tell you? No. She never told me. And you've no idea where she can be? Thank you. 